The node editor was introduced in BricksForge 3.0. It's a node-based system for creating visually appealing interactive actions. It replaces the previous events panel, which is why it has been set to legacy. To use the node editor effectively, it's important to become familiar with the individual node types. Let's take a look together at the different types, which are distinguished by different colors. Event nodes are the starting point of every node sequence. They're identified by their yellow color and refer to specific events, such as clicks, hover actions, or page loads. These nodes are essential because they serve as the trigger for all subsequent actions. Remember, when you start a sequence, always begin with an event node. Now, let's move on to action nodes. They're identified by their gray color and represent the actual actions to be performed. They are the heart of every sequence and can carry out various tasks, like changing attributes, hiding an element, or playing a video. Action nodes can be chained together to create more complex processes. Finally, we have the condition nodes, which you can recognize by their gray color combined with red output pins. They enable you to create logical branches in your node sequences. With condition nodes, you can check whether an element is visible, whether a certain query parameter exists, or whether a variable has a specific value. Great. Now you know what the different node types do. Next, let's look at the pins that connect these nodes to each other. Connecting nodes is as simple as dragging lines between the inputs and outputs. Each node type has specific input and output points that can be logically connected. These connections determine the flow of actions and allow you to create complex interactions. Let's explore the various pin types in detail. We'll start with execution pins. These are the basic connection points that control the flow of execution between nodes. They're represented by triangular shapes on the left and right sides of each node. When an execution pin is activated, it triggers the execution of the connected node. Important to know, each execution pin can only have a single connection to another node. This ensures a clear and predictable execution flow that goes from left to right. Next up are input pins, the entry points for data and parameters that a node needs in order to run. You'll recognize them by the small circles on the left side of the nodes. They can accept various data types, which are indicated by different colors. Green for text, blue for numbers, and red for Boolean values. Of course, we also need output pins. You'll find these as small circles on the right side of the nodes. They pass data on to other nodes. Just like the input pins, the color indicates which data type the pin outputs. Now that we know about the different pin types, it's important to understand how they work together. A key aspect of working with the node editor is data type compatibility. Only pins with compatible data types can be connected. This helps you avoid logical errors and ensures reliable functioning of your node sequences. If you try to connect incompatible pins, you'll see a red indicator. With compatible pins, a green indicator appears, so you immediately know whether your connection will work. Don't worry if it all seems a bit complex at first. Using the node editor does require a bit of a learning curve, but over time, you'll see how intuitive the system actually is. The color coding and pin system make developing interactive elements clear and easy to follow. With some practice, you'll be creating complex interactions in no time. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at some special nodes developed for advanced functions. For instance, there's the branch node, which routes the flow of execution in two directions based on a Boolean condition. Or the condition group, which allows you to check multiple conditions at once. Another practical helper is the delay node, which lets you introduce time delays into your execution sequence. Let's go through a practical example. Imagine you want to create an interactive button that either plays or pauses a video. First, you create an on-click event node. Next, you connect it to a branch node, because we want to perform two different actions depending on our condition. 
the branch node now needs to know which condition determines which branch it should follow. You'll see a red dot at the bottom left. This is where the node expects a Boolean value. We can connect this input to a condition node. In our case, we want to check whether a global variable has the value 1 or 0. We'll define this variable in a moment. If the value of the variable is 1, we know the video is currently playing. In that case, we want to pause the video and change the button text back to play video. If, on the other hand, the value is zero, we want to play the video and set the button text to pause video. We also update the variable after our actions so that the correct status is known for the next click. In the front end, we can see that the logic works as we have set it. The node editor is truly a great advancement in BricksForge. It makes it easy to create complex interactions without losing track of your workflow. We hope this overview has helped you understand the node editor better. Now it's your turn. Give it a try and experiment with the different possibilities.